Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. I'm still continuing my series on GNU Radio tutorials, and we're gonna look at part two of my filter video. Uh, basically, I made a video on uh, analog filters or filters in general. Uh, so this is part two of that uh, uh, video. Why am I making the second video? Because actually, what I wanted to replicate, I want to replicate the flow graph that looks. I want to replicate filters that looks like this in our textbooks. When normally when I look at my textbooks and when I'm looking at uh, filters, these are the type of diagrams that we normally see. And the last video was not justifying that. So in this video, I made a flow graph in which we're going to actually look at a couple of things and uh, which includes your transition bandwidth, uh, variability in transition bandwidth, what will happen if my trans transition bandwidth is too steep, what happens if my transition band bandwidth is too, too high, uh, what type of frequency it will pass in terms of both low pass, high pass, all four of them band pass and band star filter. So I want to replicate this diagram that we normally see in our textbooks. So in a low pass filter we have pass band frequencies. These are the frequency that I'm interested in passing and these are the frequency I want to reject. So these are the pre frequencies which I want to pass and these are the frequency which I want to stop. In a high pass filter just to recap these lower frequencies which I wanted to block, I want to pass higher frequency component. In band, band pass filter, actually I want to reject my lower frequencies and I want to reject my higher frequencies. I'll have a set of frequency which consists of lower cutoff frequency and higher cutoff frequency. So I want to I'm only interested in this part of the frequencies. And of course, in band star filter, I'm only interested at the lower side and a higher side. In the middle, I want to block these frequencies. So these are the filters. This is what the diagram we normally see in our textbooks, and I want to replicate this. In order for me to replicate this, here is the simple flow graph. Right here, it's just like a normal flow graph, but I have made some variable. Uh, I use some range sliders to actually change something on runtime. So still I have a signal source that is one mega that is being controlled by this GUI range slider which is sine frequency that has a default frequency of 300 kilohertz and is going all the way up to one mega. So that, that has the star frequency of one mega. So this is being controlled by this. Next is of course definitely I want to have some type of noise floor that noise floor is given by this noise source which is has a Gaussian profile and that is being con uh, controlled by this noise amplitude which is given right here so the default value for noise is 0.1 the maximum is 1 and you're going at an increment of 0.1 alright then both of these signals are added together it's going into a throttle block this throttle block everything is in complex so I'm just converting that into real value and since I'm using a real filter, so this is, so I have all four filters right here. So low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and band reject filter. So the first thing I want to do is actually this. When I look at the property of my low pass filter, uh, sample rate is still one mega, which is continuing from here. Then it should have a high cutoff frequency. Why? Anything that is underlying GNU radio can be controlled with a GUI range slider, which is given as this. But as you notice this, I have a cutoff frequency that is high cutoff frequency. What is the value of high cutoff frequency, which is defined by the slider? High cutoff frequency, so let me just close this. High cutoff frequency, you have a default value of 200 kilohertz starting from zero and it's going all the way up to 500 kilohertz because your sample rate is one megahertz divided by two would give you 500 kilohertz. Why do I need high cutoff frequency here? So let's just quickly look at our diagram right here. If I were to look at it, so my cutoff frequency would be this, isn't it? Right here at this point. So in my low pass filter, these are the frequencies which I want to pass and this is going to be my cutoff frequency. I'm calling this frequency after this it will actually block these frequencies. So I'm calling this high, high cutoff frequency. Now notice this, so this is going to be your high cutoff frequency point. That's why it's defined in terms of high cutoff frequency. Now, if you were to look at the parameters, let me disable this and let me enable this. If you were to look at the parameters, I have right here in a high pass filter, a low cutoff frequency. And low cutoff frequency is being defined by this slider. If you, let me just close this. Okay, 
and low cutoff frequency is defined by 100 kilohertz default value for high cutoff frequency was 200 kilohertz but for low cutoff frequency is 200 kilo 100 kilohertz divided of course and the highest frequency is sampling divided by 2 which is 500 kilohertz why let's look at the diagram again because in high pass filter this is going to be that frequencies that which which I want to reject which is going to be my low cutoff frequency point right here so this is going to be the low cutoff frequency point which is associated with my high pass filter which is this so these are the frequencies before this cutoff frequency I want to block all of those frequencies anything above than this frequency I want to pass that's why in your high pass filter I'm using a low, low, low cutoff frequencies to define this point and in my low pass filter a low pass filter I'm defining a high pass a high cutoff frequency point now when you look at band pass filter and band stop filter of course this is going to be your low cutoff frequency point and this is going to be your high cutoff frequency point of course at your band stop filter the frequencies that you are passing is going to be your lower frequencies which is going to be this and which is going to be this so if you were to look at it band stop filter is sort of like high pass filter and your low pass filter combined together right and this is just an opposite of that so that's the basic idea so I'm going to look at my picture and uh, which looks exactly like what we normally see in our textbooks and so let me just disable this and let me let's go over these filter one by one so let me disable this and let me enable this there is also another parameter which actually control the transition and that is given as transition bandwidth transition bandwidth is actually called by a slider called transition bandwidth so let's just look at our transition bandwidth slider which is a GUI range which has a frequency of 50 kilohertz which is a default frequency and it's going all the way up to 1 kilohertz and all the way up to 100 kilohertz what transition bandwidth is let's just quickly look at our diagram once again this is that transition bandwidth so in order for me to have a low transition bandwidth frequency with let's say 1 kilohertz this is going to be just like this which is going to be a response of an ideal filter but in order for me to achieve this like a box shaped transition normally this transition is like this in order for me to achieve this this transition it requires a lot of computation so we should have some type of a leverage when when you don't want to have a lot of computation we can we can play around with this transition bandwidth having a very low number low frequency number like for example in our case our transition bandwidth the lowest is one kilohertz having a transition bandwidth of one kilohertz which means it requires a lot of computation having a wider transition bandwidth which i can control and i'll show you in our flow graph uh, you will get a, a wider uh, and it requires low competition uh, low computation and it, it will have a wider profile so that's why this transition bandwidth is called here in all of those flow graphs let me just quickly run this and just try to replicate this what we normally see in our books here we go so now the only blocks that are going to be active in this is going to be your noise when there's no noise you have your actual signal which is lying somewhere around 300 uh, 300 kilohertz you can see your frequency let's introduce some noise because in the presence of noise you want to filter out your actual signal now your signal source is still at 300 kilohertz the only thing on these sliders which is going to be active it's not going to be a low pass component nothing is changing the only thing that will be active is going to be your high pass component high cutoff frequency component because that is this that is defining this 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 point which is going to be a high cutoff frequency I can change this because I have a slider now I can change this you can see that it's went even further because my frequency is now if I were to calculate this 111 kilohertz so this is going to be my transition bandwidth which lies somewhere around 100 almost close to somewhere around transition bandwidth somewhere around no it's not transition bandwidth your high cutoff frequency range somewhere around here now this this is steep line that you normally see this is transition bandwidth so let's look at the graph that we normally see for low pass filter in our textbooks which is this this is an ideal filter that has a steep transition bandwidth I can I can also do that in my flow graph as well by manipulating this so if I have this transition bandwidth now my my this filter is an ideal filter now if I use this filter now the problem is this is going to require a lot of computation 
So by having, so this is a steep, very steep transition, just like we normally see in our textbooks. Let me just quickly show you in terms of a diagram, which is this. All right. So it's blocking all of those frequencies, which is at around 300 kilohertz. All right. Because I have a high cutoff frequency range of 111. I can change this. I, I can bring this in my band by changing this and boom. Now start passing this. Can you see this by changing high cutoff frequency? But I have a change. I have changed my range using my high cutoff slider. Now, or I can just lower it down like this. Now this is not passing. Anything that will pass, anything that signal will pass, it will show up here because now it's attenuating my signal up to negative 140, uh, negative 107 dB. So this signal is not passing through. I can just have my transition band with something like this, which looks more realistic, sort of like this. Now I can bring this frequency into my band. Here we go. Here we go. So anything less than this, anything less than my high cutoff frequency, which is around 150 kilohertz, somewhere 156 kilohertz right here, it's actually going to pass. So this frequency is being passed through my filter that's why it has a value of negative 18 db as compared to if i were to change my frequency right here right here this is being attenuated almost by negative 90 db as you can clearly see so that's the beauty that's what i wanted to show you that's why i'm making a part two of this of this signal so only this and this block is active and this so this looks quite realistic as compared to your uh, textbook uh, filter diagrams um, now the next thing is let me just close this simulation let's let's go to our GNU radio let's disable this and enable this let's disable this and enable this so high pass filter now let's look at it isn't this the response that looks exactly like this these are the frequencies that I'm interesting in passing so anything that is Above then my low cutoff frequency I will pass. So the only button that is active is this button is not active. As you can see, there is no change. This is actually going to be your low cutoff frequency. Sorry. Uh, so is this. I can play around with this. So 166 kilohertz, somewhere around here. This is 166 kilohertz, as you can clearly see. All right. So by changing this, so ev all everything above then this. 312 anything that is above the 166 kilohertz is passed through my low pass filter uh, high pass filter now if i were to just move this so my low pass frequency has changed move this a little bit more now this is being attenuated and my response is like this so th all of this anything lower than this is being attenuated now i can change this frequency and it's start passing again 438 okay just to be clear okay so this is 437 kilohertz and uh, same thing I can just play around with my transition bandwidth to make it more steeper now as you can see this by playing around with this let me just bring this over here now I have a steeper transition band which is much much steeper that requires a lot of computation as compared to a transition bandwidth that is not steep is something like this all right so that's the idea uh, behind high pass filter. I hope you like uh, uh, Okay, so let me just simply turn this Disable this turn this band pass filter on by enabling it Now let's look at the response of my band pass filter Now your band pass filter as per our diagram with okay, okay Okay, so my band pass filter will block frequencies that are below lower cutoff frequency and higher cutoff frequency. So it's basically my signal. So if I were to look at it, it's somewhere around 100 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. So 100 kilohertz is somewhere around at my somewhere around here. Because let's make our transition bandwidth steeper so I can see this. So this is somewhere around 100 kilohertz, and your higher cutoff frequency is somewhere around 200 kilohertz. When I make my transition steeper, you will see a response that looks exactly like what you normally see in your textbooks. I can bring this signal in. So this signal is being attenuated. Let's bring it in. Now this start passing. So as you can clearly see, your noise floor is somewhere around 19 as compared to when I move this. 
here this is at negative 114 dB so by playing around with this I can control my lower transition bandwidth uh, with this I can play around with my low uh, cutoff frequency limits and high cutoff li limits. This is I just wanted to show you because uh, indeed it is at the steeper at 200 kilohertz and this is somewhere around 100 uh, kilohertz. Your low cutoff frequency range and high cutoff frequency range. Hence you are passing it. Uh, so by changing the frequency, uh, now you are somewhere right over here. So that's the idea behind band stop filter, band pass filter. This is the band that we're passing. So let me just simply disable this and enable this. And let me just quickly run our flow graph. All right, so let's look at the diagram. We are only interested in frequencies which are over on my right hand side and over on my left hand side. This is what band stop filter or band notch filter it is, or band reject filter is. So these are the frequency I'm passing. Let's bring this guy inside of this. So when I bring this, all of a sudden, my signal is being attenuated at about negative 60, negative 65 dB. And I can also play around with my transition of, of course, transition bandwidth. So let me just lower down my transition bandwidth. This is exactly what a response should look like. And this is what we normally see in our books, which looks something like this. Any frequencies which are in the middle are being blocked. Anything over on my right hand side, on my left hand side, they are being uh, passed uh, in a pass band. And by just simply lowering it, uh, bring my frequency lowering down, I can bring this frequency out here. I can play around with my, let's just move this transition bandwidth a little bit like this and just change this cutoff frequency to lower. Okay, this is how this response is and let's lower this. So as you can see, by lowering my cutoff frequency at higher cutoff frequency and a lower cutoff frequency, I am getting like a notch like a steep signal that we normally see in also a textbook signal that is much steeper uh, like like a notch much steeper so you are getting that response too by playing around with your cutoff frequency and your uh, lower cutoff frequency range you're, you're getting that notch right here this this peak that we normally see so these are the frequencies which are being passed and you can just also look at it closely here we go now to make our transition bandwidth much steeper this is that notch. Now when I bring my signal in, as you can clearly see, because the notch is quite thin, this is actual, actually my signal and this is being attenuated at negative 69 dB. So, so that's the beautiful idea behind my filters and uh, just that's why I would love, that's why I made this part two of this video because I wanted to show you all of this. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.